For the last 20 years, as part of my role as consultant, activist or event producer, I've walked into a room and met a new team. And I can now tell within an hour if that team is going to make the project work. How do I tell? I want to share with you the key thing that I've discovered. Inclusive teams deliver. And I can't quite believe I made that the key phrase of this talk, I mean really. With my stutter, a hard consonant like D is always a bit of a minefield. So I'm certain the message is important. What do I mean by inclusive teams deliver? Those from a technology-based background might spot that I'm a business analyst, someone who spends their day ensuring everyone on the team has the same understanding of terms, as I'm about to break down a sentence of three words to try and establish exactly what each word means. I'm going to leave inclusive to the end. So to start with defining the terms, what is a team? A team is literally just a group of people. They don't need to have a vision, they don't need a set role, and don't need defined numbers. It's a group of people who are working together. What do I mean by deliver? By deliver, I mean making something happen. So we've got a group of people together who are making something happen. That can be a piece of software, that can, that can be an entire festival, that could be an event like today. What do I mean by inclusive? How does that inclusivity show? Inclusive to me means that all voices are able to be contributing and all voices are valued. There are no voices that are privileged over others. There are no voices who are negated. It's all voices given the space to contribute and always valued. So how do you spot an inclusive team? This is something I've realized I can do now just walking onto the floor with a client or walking into a room, or even now joining a Zoom room, I can really quickly spot when a team is being inclusive and showing the right behaviours. For example, people are able to talk without fear. So people can speak up, they can express their lived experience, they can talk about why this matters to them, they can talk with passion, they can be vulnerable and express parts of their lives without fear of this being used against them. For many of us, there is a fear around revealing your sexuality, your gender, your relationship status, whether or not you've got a child. Anything like that can have consequences for your future. In the best teams, people are just able to talk and give their thoughts without being scared of what might happen. So imagine setting yourself apart from your current team. By telling a tale really told in a middle-class environment like a technology company, such as being unemployed for over four months and having to wait until midnight to run a bath and the washing machine because this is when the off-peak energy tariff starts and you couldn't afford to top up the meter key that week. The group as a whole listen before talking. So it's prioritising listening and understanding and it's how people are listening. It's the mindset you're listening with. Are you listening for a gap so that you can say what's been building in your head? Or are you listening, forming a question to empathise with the other person and to really understand what is going on in their life? Imagine your team listening when you tell the story about keyed meters and asking to understand why tariffs matter so much and acknowledging that fuel poverty and food poverty are so interlinked that some days someone in that situation can't cook if they run the washing machine. Understanding is one of the key things with consensus decision making. And you see this on the best teams where everyone puts their voice in. It's a joke about ThoughtWorks. How many opinions are there? Take the number of thought workers and add at least one. So if there's five thought workers, there's probably going to be somewhere between six and seven opinions. And this is the core of our consensus decision making. Everyone gives their opinion and their idea of how we should progress. It is discussed and the entire group as a group, agree on the best way forward. Making decisions by consensus is really vital to spotting an inclusive team. It is also about ensuring an equitable chance for all people to contribute. This notion of equity, it's about recognising that there are some people because of historical discrimination and the society that we live in who have had fewer chances to contribute. There are less chances they will be in the room. 
there are less chances that in the room there are voices from people of colour, people who are migrants, people who have worked non-traditional jobs, or are from or in non-traditional family structures. It's ensuring that they have an equitable chance to contribute to the discussion that is going on. If everyone in the conversation has always had a steady job and income, are they going to be talking about the impact on day-to-day -day living from financial insecurity? And it's about having that care and safety in conversations. If somebody is telling you something, if somebody is revealing something openly, the group needs to hold that and look after that. And it's about having that mindset of caring about each other. You can spot it in the tone of conversation on the team, as the banter biting and about putting somebody down, including the speaker, in the jokes and messages? Or is the banter about building up and caring on the team? Do people focus on praise and support? The best teams, like Queer House Party, are always about reassuring and sharing care with everyone on the team, which makes an environment where it's safe to be vulnerable and say, I need extra help. I am anxious today and I am dyslexic, so I'm struggling to read messages. Can people voice note instead? Because you know the team will support you, make adjustments and build you up. Looking for those five signals means I can talk with a team and tell very quickly if they are an inclusive team who will deliver. Now, are these ideas about an inclusive team earth shattering and new? Well, I kind of wish it was, because then it'd be like, you know, writing a book, selling it here and end up well minted. But no, it's not. It's been around for more than 30 years in technology, but it has never been in the limelight. Because inclusion is a mindset. It is about how we think about things. It's about the way that we go into those actions. Because we know that when you have the right mindset, you do the actions in the correct way and you get the right results. We know we don't do the right actions right if we don't have the right mindset. So. How many of us have stood in a team update or stand-up meeting where people are disconnected until it's their chance to talk? They've given their update and you can see them switch off again. They're not listening to everyone else's updates. They're there solely waiting for the chance to talk, giving their update and going away. These actions show their mindset is not about the team sharing. The right actions are about catching up on what's going on across the team ensuring that if somebody's getting stuck, someone else is there saying, actually, let me come and work with you, or that looks like a blocker, or even let's mob on it as it seems more complex than we thought. Those are the conversations we should be having at these team update meetings, not waiting for a chance to talk, saying our piece and mentally walking away. Inclusion is about having that right mindset. To get the mindset right, we want to use language that most everyone is familiar with. So what I will present is what we've called a manifesto for inclusion. There are four key points. We are uncovering better ways of building a diverse and inclusive technology industry by doing it and helping others do that. Through this, we've come to value a focus on issues over a focus on identity. There are multiple things that happen when you focus on identity. For me, as a disabled, non-binary queer with mental health issues, I can end up with people saying, well, you can belong to the disabled group or the LGBT group, but you can't belong to both groups, even though the core issues may overlap. And it's about focusing on those core issues that are common across identity. Those issues about representation, about being seen, about being included, about having a voice valued, which affects so many people over those issues which focus on identity. Now, this is not to say that identity isn't important, and it's important to ensure that we are representative. It is focusing on the issues that come out of those conversations over focusing on identity politics. We value guidelines and flexibility over policy and process. I can give you an example on this one. ThoughtWorks created a process that said you can't have any aliases on your email address. We'll set you up with an email address, that's in a specific format, and that's it across the company. And then I come along because my name, my first name is literally one letter, hashtag queer nuisance. So people would put in my first name and the search wouldn't work. 
and then they'd try to put in a space and the search wouldn't have me at the top of the list. When I told Philbeck's operations about this problem, all they had to do was go and put in Dr. J and Dr. J Harrison in the systems so that everyone could find me. But these are email addresses, e but these are email aliases for me. Inclusion is about having that flexibility in those guidelines to be able to sort things out. It is also about how you label things. Like in the current lockdown months, how do you talk about any extra leave? Is the leave about being a parent or is it about caring for somebody? It is about being able to take that extra leave when you need it. If you're looking after an elderly parent, if you're looking after a peer or a partner who's suddenly unwell, or trying to look after a child. It is the same. You've got caring responsibilities on top of your day job. We value two-way communication over education. For example, if I say something and somebody is like, that's not quite right. It's about having that two-way communication to understand and empathize why I might have said something over one-way education that pushes your opinion onto others without inviting a response. This mindset stops us saying you're wrong and putting someone else on the defensive. This allows us to try and understand where somebody has come from. They can say anything from, I'd only heard that used a couple of times before and I didn't realize it was a pejorative term, to I didn't know there was another way of seeing that term. This happened to me in an activist space. I used the word chav and rather than just tell me I was wrong, people tried to understand why I might have used it and helped me to get to grips with its history. It's not a good word for working class people and how the term has been used in the media to other a whole group of people. We value making an inclusive space over reporting numbers. Now, most of us like numbers and we like to say we've got X number of trans people in our group and things like that. If you're not making an inclusive space where people feel okay to give their pronouns, where people feel okay to just use whichever bathroom is going to suit how they're feeling today, then that is a very different feeling over reporting your numbers. It's about people feeling that inclusivity. This is not a binary. There is value in items on the right and we value the items on the left more. There is value in all of the items and we value the highlighted items more. So to bring it all back together, we are uncovering better ways of building this diverse and inclusive technology industry by doing it and helping others do it. Through this, we have come to value. A focus on issues over a focus on identity. Guidelines and flexibility over policy and process. Two-way communication over one-way education. Making an inclusive space over reporting numbers. And again, it is not a binary. There's value in items on the right and we value the items on the left more. There is value in all the items and we value the first items in the list more. So that is what I mean by the mindset of inclusive teams deliver. When I say manifesto, it conjures up an idea of a massive shift. What I am presenting is something that is more an incremental change. Each small change in mindset makes a difference. Changing mindsets has been my thing since 2007. This here is my motto, my driving force. If we are not visible, we cannot demand the world make space for us. Now, despite me saying this, I'm not a demanding person. What I'd like to do is to challenge you. Challenge you to go out and look at this way of changing mindsets and think about how that might change the teams you work in. By changing the teams that we work in, how that's going to change the companies we work in, and how that will slowly change the entirety of the industry that we work in. Because heck, why not go, why not go for trying to change the world? Because inclusive teams deliver. <laughs>